So uh, the archive, uh, the Learning Games Initiative Research Archive, uh, is a collection that uh, is indiscriminate. We collect everything related to the, what we call the computer game complex. That is, not just video games and not just video game consoles, um, but also books about games, and those books could be academic or they could be things like strategy guides, um, trade publications, uh, so the, uh, the newsletters that arcade managers uh, used to circulate amongst each other uh, to help each other uh, you know, fix the, the, uh, the Ms. Pac-Man machine, uh, uh, correspondence and uh, concept art from game designers, just about everything. We'll, we'll take anything in the archive. And the reason that we uh, have that, and the reason that it all circulates, by the way, we send things to people all over the world. Uh, in fact, we'll send anything from the archive uh, to anyone in the world, um, and do so for free or as close to free as we can reasonably uh, manage. Um, but the reason we do that is, again, because it is difficult to be in game studies, unlike being, say, in literature, uh, where it, you know, these days you can get almost, maybe not almost any book, but you can get many, many books uh, digitally, and if not digitally, through interlibrary loan or something like that. With games, you can't really do that. And some games and game systems are quite expensive. Uh, things like uh, the trade journals, they're just really difficult to track down because um, they were never meant to be kept. Indeed, many of the things in the archive were never meant to be kept. It's a disposable, games are a disposable culture. Um, and so for us, we have this concept uh, called preservation through use. Uh, this is how we justify letting people check anything out of the archive. Uh, unlike a, a more conventional uh, special collections where it's white gloves and the book is put on a stand and you use a wand to turn the pages, which is really important work. We're, we're not uh, suggesting that, that uh, our mode replace that one. Um, but for us, games are about interactivity, um, and so we feel like, yeah, you have to be able to interact with them. And that includes uh, handling just the cartridge, not even just playing the cartridge. But you need to handle the cartridge, feel its heft, you know, and feeling how it feels to put it into the, into the machine. Uh, you know, and, and all those things are part of the practices that constitute uh, game culture and therefore game studies. So the archive is really about helping people get as many of those experiences as possible. I just want to add, um, Ken mentioned did a great job talking about the various kinds of publication in addition to the games and game systems. There are other artifacts as well. Um, there's uh, a lot of handicrafts, so art. Um, there are um, toys, there are food, there are commemorative items, t-shirts, hats, belt buckles, themed pencils, uh, light, hand-done light, light switch uh, plate covers. Um, we pretty much try to collect anything game related. Um, the idea is that we're never, we're not, obviously never going to collect everything. You can't, even, even in, with small collections of things or small numbers of items, it's really hard to collect an entire set of something. Um, what we're trying to do is, is not collect everything, not, uh, but just to collect enough things and enough different things to, to give people a sense of the breadth of the game complex. So it is really um, quite impressive, um, and it becomes clear when you when you step into the archive and you see just all of these things um, from uh, a, a, maybe a, a Pac-Man embossed on a Lee belt buckle from 1979, for example, um, or. Uh, or a handmade Atari um, cartridge, or um, controller, excuse me, with big light buttons and it's made out of sheet metal and things like that. It's, you, you get a, a sense of the astonishing breadth and really complexity of games and their cultures. So that's what we're really hoping the archive does.